This is Ray's angled magnet generator. My last series was Ray's no drag magnetic generator. This is the next version uh, in the series. I worked with the alignment of the magnets and found out to be more efficient and more power. Okay, right now we're having, uh, I set it 10 volts. It's drawing around 25 milliamps or so. Okay, now I'm going to put in the what I call an activator magnet. The generator itself seems to regenerate down upon itself. So it adds internally more power. And this is an over unity event taking place now. So uh, we dropped the voltage and amperage for the drive motor. I explained in the series of raised no drag generators uh, how that if it draws more power or becomes loaded down more then your requirements also go up. But if it's an OU event then the uh, when it's loaded down say this magnet uh, instead of raising the amperage it would drop it and this is the uh, what's going to place right here okay so here's the uh, diagram there are three requirements for this to work three conditions tap this OU usable energy a base magnet set at a diagonal angle and let's go ahead and turn this off you can see that I have uh, two facing magnets up and there's a neutral line going down the center we'll cover that later and it's set at a 45 oh, really not a 45 it depends on the uh, diameters of your magnets more a diagonal from one corner to the other corner and if it's perfectly square it would be diagonal but uh, depending on the size of your magnet really it's from one corner to the other corner and you're cutting this neutral zone line uh, at a uh, diagonal. And this allows it to transfer from a uh, uh, one uh, field to another field, which is, uh, we'll demonstrate that later, which is uh, usually you have to uh, add power to it to get through that uh, north line, north-south uh, barrier. So anyhow, let's go ahead and start her up again. So we had to have the base magnet at a uh, diagonal from one corner to the other, crossing this north-south barrier, which is also a neutral zone. Okay. The second requirement is a diagonal uh, magnet set at a 90-degree angle, and this is what I call the uh, uh, divider magnet because it's dividing from the north to the south it actually goes from one to the other freely and we'll talk about that later also so this magnet is 90 degrees uh, to this plane so there's your 90 degrees and the uh, last requirement or condition is the motion itself and we'll go into that a little bit more later too it's uh, really fascinating that this stop and go whenever this base magnet is switching from a stop to go back the actual mechanism of the OU gain also stops so you have to have motion for this to take place so you have three requirements you have the base magnet you have the diagonal magnet and you have motion Okay, and the base magnet uh, is a, uh, you have your north and south facing up, and your divider magnet is at 90 degrees with a south-north facing up on the edge. So this is south-north, but this is south, uh, south-north, south-north. So they uh, kind of in there at that angle. If you get it turned around then this will bog down so you'll know right away. 
So at this point here, we're in the over unity mode. And, uh, and we're drawing somewhere around 10 milliamp if you average everything out. And without the divider magnet, See how that, that's going up uh, over twice. Yeah, I figured around 25 milliamps. And if you figure that out, uh, if you have the 10 milliamps with 10 volts and multiply them together, you, you get about uh, uh, 10 times your 10 milliamps is about uh, what is the 100? 100 milliwatt? 100 milliwatt. And if you take this condition here says 25 times 10, then you have 250 milliwatt. So you're you're actually uh, using less than it's cutting it in half plus the energy requirements. So this is a self-feeding generator. Right now there is what you have as a working uh, motor, and uh, so. When you load it down, it should further require more current. So, but in this position, with this mechanism going on, which we'll go into a little bit more, we have less power required than when we started. Okay? So, we can also do a little frequency test I'll hold this up at about 530 530 we'll go ahead and take the activator magnet away so we had 530 rpm I have a new meter, frequency meter coming in the mail. It hasn't got here yet, so I'm using my old one. I kind of resurrected it. wasn't really working too good. So now we're at 468, 470. So some 540 to 470. So you can see that there is actually a gain in power and again in frequency because you have more OU events going on. Let's put this back in again. You can see my setup how I put it. I have my little camshaft. I went you can uh, visit Ray's no drive generator and uh, and see how I made that. This is on a little slide. You wanted to get real fancy. In fact, what I did, I tried to figure out why we were having this uh, effect that I was gaining uh, in uh, energy. And I thought, well, perhaps it's just lifting the weight of the base from the slide. And uh, that made it go freer. So I put a string on there with a, a spring. So I lifted that off the base so that gravity was not in the effect. So if I put it into motion, then if there was even anything pulling up more, it was going to drag it down faster because it was already lifted up against this bottom piece. So it didn't do that. It uh, still had this effect. The other thing was, theory was, perhaps there was a net effect of different uh, fields taking place. When you get to this side, the resultant fields help it go this way. And if you're on this side, resultant fields together help it go that way. But that didn't make sense either because if you got over here and the resultant fields were pushing it this way, it would keep pushing it that way. So when you motor draw it back, it would be going against this uh, resultant force and you wouldn't have a net gain. 
So I took those two factors out of the list. One was the drag and the other one was this was some kind of resultant forces which uh, could be more easily explained. So we'll go into a, a theory uh, just very lightly because it's just a little bit off the wall. But something is happening here. What it is, I'm not quite sure. So right now, uh, whatever process is being utilized to explain the gain, it must be regenerative, regenerative in nature. It just keeps going and going. There's no fading out like it was a store of energy and it's, it's using it up. So whatever's happening is regenerative in nature. The strength does not diminish with time. Where and what this gain is coming from needs to be accounted for and further researched. I believe what's happening has to do a lot with the neutral zone. The neutral zone has always been a, a very uh, suspect <laughs> thing for me. Uh, I just don't understand it. Uh, okay, we have a very strong magnet with a uh, north and a south field and right in the middle you know, conventional magnets magnetism they cover this and uh, you can get right in but if you let it go off to the side it pulls to the side and basically what they're saying uh, from what I understood was the combination of the right and left fields coming together uh, neutralizes or cancels each other out well if that's true that's a lot of canceling out it's almost like an implosion of that that, uh, they, these things are so strong, if you ever took two opposing mags and tried to push them together, these neos, that's powerful. Or if you had them pulling together. And whatever source is creating that must be very, very, very strong. Because the closer you get together your magnet fields, the stronger the opposing or the more attraction. So if these are coming in together and canceling each other, the force that's created uh, in there at that small point must be tremendous. Uh, I'm almost thinking that could be a, this might be a static nuclear device right here, a common magnet, because those forces are so strong in there. And so if they're canceling each other out, it's almost like uh, some kind of implosion event. The other thing is they say that the uh, two fields are creating the neutral zone. Uh, from my research, it's possible that the neutral zone itself is a self-existing entity, and it is creating and spewing and exploding out from one force into two. And that explosion event apparently is 100% efficiency because these fields are static. That's why we call a magnet field, you don't get any work from it because it's static. But if this uh, neutral zone was fluctuating, then the north-south fields would be fluctuating too, and they don't do that. So that uh, lends the, for me, that it's probably 100% efficiency transfer from a one source uh, neutral flux, whatever you want to call it, and it explodes. It must be something to do with the metal, the iron, the, uh, the magnetic uh, materials that we're using must be allowing this uh, neutral zone to set up and then it, uh, it's able to bring out these forces. But at that point there must be something that's splitting out and I believe it uh, must be a strong force that's doing that. I call it a magnetic explosion and you don't see it or, uh, or even in testing you can't find it because it's a static field. Yeah. So this is just theory. I, I wasn't even going to bring that up. It's just a little bit far out. But uh, that's a possibility. That's what a theory is. You take what you got here and research and try and figure out what it is. You try to eliminate things like drag and uh, so forth. And then what you're left with, you're having a gain here and you can't explain it. So you have to come up with some kind of theory. So anyhow, this is what we got. And uh, we have... Uh, how it's set up here, you can make this. Uh, these are stainless steel, so they're not magnetic. Uh, this is on a little uh, slide plunger. You can adjust it. 
This does have to be exactly in the middle. You have to have the divider magnet uh, passing straight through that uh, diagonal. It passes through the, uh, the uh, neutral zone going from the north and the south. And that, that was a puzzle for years. I couldn't figure out how to get through this neutral zone because it takes a lot of power to get through there. And yet, if you take a magnet and go diagonally, it freely goes through there. So part of that working that it must, uh, I just kind of figured it's maybe rubbing the neutral zone, somehow releasing just a minute fraction of that. It's just enough to disturb it and release a little bit of that so that it's uh, regenerative. And uh, that was the other thing that I figured that that's probably what's happening when it comes to the end, the, the OU extra energy collapses and stops with the motion of the magnet briefly. And then on the return, then it starts up the reverse uh, force going the other way. And, it, and if it didn't collapse, then it'd keep pushing that way. But when it changes, it collapses and then the system keeps going back and forth. So that's what makes me think it's not resultant forces, but it's something to do with the collapsing and uh, starting of the uh, fields going through that neutral zone because we're going from a, a north to a south and, and you can see that that's not an easy event but uh, when you make this up here you'll see that it's very easy to go through in fact when you put a magnet in there <laughs> you actually get a, a negative uh, result it's actually uh, putting energy into the system making it run uh, faster and more easily. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I appreciate all your uh, help during the, over the years, your suggestions, your encouragement. Many times I was ready to throw up my hands and a couple times I did, but uh, the encouragement I got from your comments was really one of the defining factors that kept me going many times. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, make comments and uh, enjoy your day and make every day count.